welcome to 75 Reads. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm Joe Bozarth. And I'm April Bowlby. And guys, we are reading and talking about Room at the Top by John Brain. Yes, Room at the Top by John Brain. This book is fantastic. I think it's so beautiful. It's so beautifully written. I just, I want to speak like them. Oh, I do too. <laughs> all these phrases, I'm catching all these phrases. And I'm like, ah, note to self. I'm yes. going to use that. It's very enchanting. It's very intellectual oh. and, and British and, and so from British. the 50s and when the world was, you know. It's from a different time. For our taking. Look, I'll tell you what else I'm noticing. I feel like a lot of this stuff, I'm like, oh, wow, they're saying this stuff in mixed company. Like, they're very, um, here's the thing. I had a friend who 10 years ago now, was in her late 80s um, and she was like, your generation is so square. And I thought about it and I was thinking, reading this book, I'm thinking the stuff that they talk about and they say to each other, you couldn't get away with half the stuff they say today because it's so sexual. Yes. And I'm like, I'm, I find myself feeling a little uncomfortable, but very amused. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm thinking their generation was not as square as ours. Right. It's right. interesting. More liberated in a way. Ma no? In a weird way, yeah. maybe. Well, also, I think sexism and talking to people in certain ways was more accepted than it is now. Right. That's true. Like, if someone said some of the stuff that these guys say to these women, they wouldn't last very long. Right. And I wouldn't appreciate it. I know. I'd, some of the stuff I'd I'd be like, oh, HR. If I worked in a normal job, HR, you know, yeah, or whatever, <laughs> you know, get over here, get over here, HR. This is not okay. But it, but I am finding it pretty humorous because I'm imagining it in a British accent, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah that's the best kind of accent to imagine it in. So I have a question for you. Yes. The first thing that comes to mind when I'm reading, or that came to mind when I was reading this book, and I was, you know, we we're getting introduced to the different characters that we will discuss. I, when I thought of Bowie, I thought, oh my gosh, this man is like the thin white duke. This guy oh. is like a thin, the thin white duke. I feel like these guys are bits and pieces of them kind of compile Bowie's character, the thin white duke. And I'm just curious to know, like, did you see that at all? I do now. Yeah, You're right? You're so good at, at, at piecing these things together. This Aww. is, yeah, you like transcend, you take the book and then you find the Bowie whispers and his characters. Well, either that or I'm just reading into it. But it's I don't think more so. <laughs> Do explain. Show me what you saw. Okay, so like I was thinking about. So, so guys, this this book is about a, a guy from a small kind of crummy factory t or a mining town. Actually, I should say mill town. Sorry, mill town. Mill town. And he moves to a small, maybe less small, much nicer town. Mm -hmm. um, and he meets these people who he wants to kind of emulate. He wants to be a part of their class, their, their social class. Um, and he, we talk about the women. We talk about the men in the town. And some of the men um, remind me of, of the Thin White Duke. So the Thin White Duke, if you look online, he was a hollow man who sang songs of romance with an agonized intensity while feeling nothing. Almost reminds me a little of Joe, our main character. Yeah. Joe, to me, goes back and forth between being very cold and then so much feeling. Right. And then he catches himself and he's very cold again. Yeah. And then he's got so much feeling. He is a little bit shallow and then he's trying to, you know, better himself. And he and his pal from their small town, the small town he came from. Yeah. Uh, had a, a system where they ranked women from one to, what was it? One, one to, to ten, ten, I think. According to attractiveness and their social class. And I was like, that's disgusting. But they also ranked men, mm -hmm. which made it a little less icky. Right. Because they were ranking both of them. So uh, this number could get a this number if that's he was right. this and that and the other thing. It was kind of a magical system. It was bizarre. It was hilarious to But read. funny. Yeah, it was really <laughs> funny. But yeah, so all of these men kind of remind me in a way of the Thin oh, White Duke. the Thin White Duke. Interesting. Mm. No, I like that. It must be peppered in all sorts of ways. I mean, yeah. they talk about zombies. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And what, what is what is classified as a zombie? 
Ah, to Charles and me, that was uh, his best friend's name, it was always Dead Dufton, and the counselors and chief officials and anyone we didn't approve of were called zombies. Mm. At first, we used to number them, zombie number one, um, zombie number three, uh, and then um, and then, then I think it got too complicated for them. Well, <laughs> funny enough, the persona that Bowie had, um, the Thin White Duke, was characterized as a mad aristocrat and a moral zombie. Oh, funny. Hey, funny. Look at it's everywhere. Look at that. And then Just there was look at the that. washable zombie, the grocery manager who was always talking about baths, yep. and the smiling zombie who ran a clothing club and money lenders. So, uh, they were on top of the world. They were like in their little small yeah. town, yeah. Um, categorizing yeah. everyone as zombies. Yep. And then eventually, uh, Joe left. Joe leaves the town. He leaves the town. He leaves his friend. He goes on an adventure to this nice town mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. where he now rents a room at... What is that? From a nice couple. From a nice couple. <laughs> who are like... And I love that they're, they're like... You know, he there. She's middle aged. I wouldn't want to. You know, I'm not attracted to her in a sexual way, but I wouldn't kick her out of bed either. Like, and she's yeah. what forty. She's <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, well, they weren't living as long back then. But um, Mrs. Thompson. Yes, <laughs> Mrs. Thompson and her husband. So. Oh, and I love when he's talking about his dressing gown that he has. And, mm. oh, page 14, he talks about this dressing gown. He had one back home, and he's got a new one now. I hate the knowledge that I daren't be ill-dressed if I want to. I bought the cheap rayon garment to please myself. I bought the expensive silk garment because to always wear clothes of that quality is an unwritten term of my contract. He's speaking about his dressing gown. Mm. He's trying to be what he Once. envisions himself right. and he kind of feels like it's owed him like this is his he should be of this right. other class this ilk. and i noticed that he is running kind of from memories of his old town but they come up all the time oh they you know do. and right. he and he says to himself he says he's got an instinct uh like what uh, like a water diviner's where money's concerned, like he can tell, oh, this person has money. Right. By certain, there are certain tells for him. Yeah. Um, money is a constant. It's theme a in constant this. theme in this. He's trying to prove himself. He wants to belong into this class. He mm -hmm. feels like he doesn't belong into this class. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe he feels imposter ish. Yeah. Uh, um, and he joins. Okay, so. He joins the thespians. Oh, fantastic. And uh, it makes me want to join an acting troupe, even though they're like fraught with drama and they're kind of, some of them sound very interesting. It sounds like they have interesting conversation. Um, they have an ease about them because they're in an upper class um, that, he, that he, Joe, really enjoys. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of where he meets the whole cast of characters, minus, well, the people who he is boarding with introduce him to this group because they are part of it. Right. Um, and he meets Eva, who's kind of a flirt, mm. and she's married, and he's into her, but, you know, he, well, you think he's not above hooking up with a married woman, but he's into Eva. She flirts with him. He's just a sexual guy. He's a sexual dude. <laughs> <laughs> she flirts with him, then he was like, I'm going to act on it. And she's like, nope. So she was kind of a tease. Um, Alice is a straight shooter. Uh, and I love how he describes it. She's, you know, a little bit older than them. I think what he's, she's like eight to 10 years older than yeah. some of them. Uh, and I love how he says, he describes her lines in her face. And then when he, they're doing a table read and he loves how her lines don't disappear when she's acting, but rather they make the other girls look plain in comparison. Mm -hmm. I just thought that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now she's married to a cheater also. Yeah. He has, her, her husband's cheating with his secretary. Yes. So <laughs> I'm just like, these people are just something. Mm -hmm. um, it's very special. She, he kind of, he meets this other girl. Yes. Susan. 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 She's young and sweet and a virgin and, yeah. and lovely. Everything a guy would want. Everything a guy would a, want. A guy so coming up into a new town. Yeah, he thinks he's in love with her. Her boyfriend, Jack, is the town's richest guy's yeah. son. Uh -huh. That guy kind of, I was like, oh, thin white duke everywhere. Um, oh, wait. Yes, Jack. 
so this term that she's he's he's talking joe is talking with the man who's whom he's renting the room from right and the guy says jack would learn to blind with science and i was like oh that reminds me of that old thomas dolby song and it gave a whole new meaning to that song for me because that phrase means to overwhelm someone with details in order to influence or mislead them oh and i'm like oh okay i did not know that i didn't know that either i had to look it up wow good job i'm yeah. glad you did i'm glad you did that for all of us i had no idea <laughs> no idea <laughs> Um, so. Okay, so he meets Susan. Mm-hmm. He kind of feels challenged and wants to pursue her. Mm-hmm. Um, and everyone is like, well, you can. And he, he's intimidated by, you know, Jack. Right. Uh, because he's got all this money. And, but he's, everyone, and he's a few inches taller than And he's him. a few inches taller. Which Joe is six feet mm. and a big guy. Yeah. Um, and supposedly really handsome from what everyone seems everyone to describe. Says, everyone says he's handsome. He's incredibly handsome. But he's intimidating. And he's new meat. Yeah. And he's what? <laughs> new new meat. meat. Yes, that's what they say. <laughs> For this tiny little town. Um, and so he, uh, what does he do? Oh, um, and everyone is like, he, she, he hasn't, en- he's, she's not engaged. Yeah. She's not engaged, so you you have free will to um, go after her. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. he starts to court her. Yes, and um, she she seems lovely. Lovely. They go out, but it seems like she always says, "Oh, what did she say? Mummy would kill me if she knew I was here." Yes. So he's a he's a secret. He is he's a secret <laughs> to her parents. So he feels that, and he feels the shame mm-hmm. a bit of not being good enough and mm-hmm. not being classy enough. Mm-hmm. Um, there is this part that. I loved so much about like insecurity and and um, feeling necessarily like having to feel familiarity again. Mm-hmm. So he says, I suddenly felt entirely alone. I had a childish longing for the ugly rooms and streets where to be hungry or lost wasn't possible for the familiar faces which might bore or irritate but never hurt or betray. Yes. And I feel that way too so when you beautiful. step outside of your like your comfort zone. Yeah. And it's just like you see all the shiny things and yeah. you want to be there, but you really feel more at home. In and you're like your twisted. old place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I feel I like that. there's that struggle with Susan. Absolutely. Like he's just he's he's young, he's gonna cast his net. Um, but it's it's intimidating and and um, fright, frightening. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So he continues um, mm-hmm. the courtship. The courtship. Well, and a little aside, the part where he meets Anne, another thespian, and she acts very uninterested in him, and he says, "And I took her at face value." Which is the last thing any woman wants. I was like, that is disgusting. Because he's like, oh, I should have flirted with her because she would have been nicer to me. Right, exactly. I, and I'm like, what do you mean taking someone at face value is the last thing any, anyone no, wants? It's ridiculous. You dumb boy. But it's fantastic because, what is he, like 22? Like the I ego? Think he's like 25. Oh, maybe? 25. All right. Yeah, yeah. 24. He 25. thinks he knows everything. He thinks he knows everything. There's cigarettes in his mouth. There is one funny thing. He says, when I'm on edge, I somehow forget to smoke. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that supposed to be the opposite? Yes. That's hilarious. And why it's also so funny is because he was in the Royal Air Force. Yeah. At, you know, yeah. which formed at the end of World War I. Um, another aside, it's the mm-hmm. oldest independent Air Force in the world. Look at you. Look at that. Um, so anyway, he, he was in the Air Force, and yet... Under stress, he forgets to smoke. Yeah. Hilarious. Mm-hmm. Because isn't that what they did? Here, yeah. guys, smoke, smoke. up to exactly. calm them down. Maybe he didn't smoke that much. Maybe not, which yeah. is a good thing. <laughs> which, oh, and our sweet um, Susan does not smoke. No, Susan would She's never. like the only person in this book who doesn't smoke. Yeah, that's right. Really? <laughs> yes, it's true. She's just like... Sweet. She's a gingerbread cookie. Yeah. She's just like... And I think that he's very frustrated at a certain point with that because he can't quite break through. Yeah. She doesn't seem to show him any um, preferential treatment. Mm. Like he, he'll Like everyone else does. Yeah, exactly. He'll ask, can I go with you again? And she's just like, yes. And then then he takes her for a meal. And then she's like, good night. She's just very proper. She's very proper, very sweet. She's very young. She's She's very young. She's younger than he is. She has no life experience. Yeah, she has no life experience, which I think... 
is part of the attraction. Yeah, that's right. For him. Because mm-hmm. he's a man and he wants, and there's also like, you know, that uh, challenging bit of stealing a girl from the man who right. has the money, the man who's a little taller than you. Right. Um, well, and it's also interesting that he has these pretty big feelings about Susan, but is still like attracted to Alice. And then he kind of almost seems like he's falling in love with Alice, the married woman who's yes. got the lines in her face, who's a few, like eight years older than him, I guess, um, because she's so real and yeah. he has this ease. They become friends. Mm-hmm. They go out for a beer instead of a whiskey or something else. She's just down to earth, right. really cool, says what she means, means what she says. And he's like, wow, this is the first time I've met a woman that I just really want to be her friend. And there's an ease and we can talk or we can not talk. And it's so comfortable. Mm -hmm. So they become BFFs. And, you know, her husband doesn't seem jealous at all. Well, because he's getting it on with his secretary, I imagine. But then Joe (laughs) kind of falls for Alice and they start an affair. Mm -hmm. And they meet at her friend's place. Flat at her flat, Uh, quite often it seems like once a week. I think it's a weekly thing. Oh yeah, Yeah. it seems like it's a weekly get together. So then he's kind of full of himself. He's like, well, now I've got. I'm taking out lovely Susan, who everybody adores. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to bed with Alice once a week, who everyone else is attracted to, because a lot of people seem attracted to Alice. They think she's great too. That's right, because she's just a cool chick. Yeah, and everybody likes her. So he's, he's, you know, making time with both of them and he's on top of the world about it because to him, everything's kind of competitive. That's right. He's always trying to prove himself and always trying to be better than the next guy. Mm, Maybe a little young Bowie in there. Mm -hmm, Mm. mm -hmm. So (laughs) here we are. Um, Okay. So hmm For a moment, she looked a real age and real age and mad. So he's falling in love um, with Alice, and Alice is like, uh, don't fall in love with don't me. Fall in she love actually with told me. him, you should physical. call Susan. Call, call Susan. Susan. Do what a young man would do. Well, look, here's the thing. He's get, they, I think they're falling in love with each other yeah. because they say such tender, beautiful oh. things to each other. Like Joe's first time having sex with Alice is so beautifully written mm. and i'm like did it, i'm sorry this is so so awful to say but i'm like did a man write this because right. this is so beautiful so do, beautiful. do you guys really feel, like feel this way <laughs> but you know and it, and even from his point of view from her point of view it's both so so beautifully said she envisions they're talking about staying in bed all day and and not even having sex but just staying in bed all day and i'm like wow this is the most beautiful thing i've ever read it's like page 8990 until she even describes and there's a chamber pot under the bed and i'm like screeching halt I'm like, oh. <laughs> wait beautiful description over why is there a chamber pot under the bed that's right cuz it was <laughs> written by a man <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, but anyway, but, and I love how he writes so in the moment, like Joe's mm-hmm. character is so in the moment and changes his mind from moment to moment. And I also love how in every person and every place he describes the scents, the odors, the smells. And right. that was so big for me because I could just imagine it. Like, yeah, so everything. so many writers don't involve all the senses, and I feel like John Brain is involving all of the senses it's in his so descriptions, true. and it's just amazing. It's so. that, he literally, when we were outside, I felt better. The rain had diminished to a drizzle, and the air tasted fresh and clean with that special smell like good bread and butter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Wow. Uh, it's so beautiful It's to so me. beautiful. And when he describes... Also, he makes Joe so human when he talks about Joe's parents, right? And how they died Mm-mm. when the bomb was dro- a right. bomb was dropped in their town. All like it almost never had happened, and it hit his home mm-hmm. when he wasn't home, and his parents were killed. And but he has these memories of his parents, and he knows that his parents had this higher moral character right. and would never sell out for his dad would never sell out for higher pay, and that's why his mom loved him. Mm-hmm. And he acknowledges that he is different from his parents, and somehow that acknowledgement made 
Joe a more sympathetic, sympathetic character. For right. Me. I got the feeling that he was still going to royally screw up because yeah. it was just in him to really screw up somehow exactly. and to be a really big jerk. Yeah. But he acknowledges that he's not as good a person as his parents. Right. Which is kind I love of heartbreaking. That. Yeah. But also that he has something to live up to. He has something to live up to. And I love that he talks about having to keep moving physically because he kind of, if he stands still, the memories right. of his family would catch up to him. Exactly. Exactly. And you can so identify with parts of that. Yes, you know, it says, uh, because Worley had shown me a new way of living. For the first time, I'd live in a place without memories. And for the first time, I first time lived in a place. In the three months I'd been there, I was already more a part of the town, more involved in its life than I ever had been in my birthplace. Yeah. Uh, it's very It's sad. so beautiful. It's so sad. <laughs> it's beautiful. But didn't you feel, too, that, I, look, this book, it's not a, it's not like a, you know, a thriller, Mm -mm. but I'm still at the edge of my seat because he's so in the moment. He's moment to moment. The way it's written, you are at the edge of your seat, even though it's not a thriller. Right. That's right. It's amazing. It is. It is amazing. And it's such a fast read, you guys. Like I, so, so when we read our books, April and I were talking about this, we try to read them right before we record so that it's fresh. So it's such a quick read that I finished part one days ago and I wanted to read part two but I haven't because I've been waiting to record yes. so of course tonight I'm gonna just go and dive, in. dive into part two because oh, I need to dive. know what's happening <laughs> but it's just so much fun to read you guys have to pick up this book you can easily catch up because it's so freaking easy to read yeah it's a very fast read and it's magical it's, it's very so beautiful. Uh, it takes you to a completely other world that you can follow in mm. human condition human behavior oh. of a young man trying to find his way trying to find it's just it's just so easy to lose yourself in these characters and to identify with these characters so in speaking of that i've known guys who do this I think it's around page 114 after basically the most beautiful tenderness I've ever read about one of the times he's in uh, the lover's den with Alice. Her friend comes home. Okay. Who who owns the place that they're, or rents the place that they're stealing away to. Right. And they're having a conversation. And then Alice comes out of the kitchen. And for the first time, he's like, oh, because he had just talked with the older friend, he kind of sees Alice in a different light. And this some a switch happens for him. He just switches off for a right. second. It's like a light switch. And he's like, oh, suddenly I saw the lines in a different way. And mm. she's a little older. And I'm like, no, no you just no, had no. this beautiful feeling yeah. for her. And now you're like, oh, I see the older friend in Alice. Yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 no. He associates the two. Like yeah. the, the spell was broken. The and spell was broken and it was so sad. started to look at her differently. Now, you read a little farther. I did. I... So I read through chapter 13. I stopped after chapter 13, and you stopped before chapter yeah, 13. Yeah, I read through 12. So do you want to hear what happens? I do, oh Joe. Tell me. Tell us all. Oh, my okay. God. I'm so excited, you guys. I, she was going to tell me before we started to record, and I said, no. Wait. So I you learn. guys read through chapter 13. Oh, my God. Okay, so... And he starts it by, and you know, it's going to be, and nothing good can come when a person's like, and what happened, what she says next, I wish she would never have said. And I'm like, no, no, no. Oh God, it's happening. And it's just a conversation they were talking about when she was young and poor, that she wasn't, uh, she modeled nude for an artist, two artists. Oh, um, good for her. Modeled nude. And she's like, I'm not ashamed of it. It was my body. I'm not ashamed of my body. Because she's a woman. And she's a woman. And she's like, I needed the money. I, I was on the verge of starvation. I need, And he's like, I've known people who were that poor and they didn't model nude. He oh, no. Something flips for him oh. and he can't handle it. And he is pissed. Because he really loves her. Shoot. Right? He's like, and it's not that I think it's disgusting. I just can't bear the thought of other people looking at her nakedness. He says, it's not decent. Oh, no. And it's like, you freaking pick your morals, guy, because yeah. you're having an affair with a married ooh, woman. Oh, you can't have your cake and eat it too, right? sir. And oh. he knows it, but he can't he help can't himself. He can't help himself because he's young and And he dumb. even grabs her by the shoulders and calls her a bitch. Oh! <gasps> 
what? You have to read it. Oh, no. And she's like, I'm okay. not ashamed. And yeah. Blah, blah. It's Aww, insane. Oh, she used to protect herself. She had it from him. From him. And he was so lovely to yeah. her. It's so wonderful. Oh, no. And when you read the tenderness between them, you guys, like, she talks about how safe he makes her feel and all this stuff. And then he just snaps. He snaps. And he knows it. And he's like, I can't help myself. And he's like, stop, stop. And he's like, and I can't. At least he's aware. Oh, it was awful. So wow. they have a drink, make some food, and call it a day. Oh, and oh, that's where we end. Oh, call it a day, you guys. Wow. Oh, no. <sighs> I feel like it's a little bit, it reminds me, I just got a flash of um, dangerous liaisons for oh, some reason. How I can see that. Like, they call it a day, but then I feel like, He's going to run into her at the opera with Susan, and they're going to have this connection of, uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, you know it's going to be intense. Yeah, what's going to happen? I don't know. I I'm, can't wait to find out. Seriously. But that just broke my heart. This is one of the most delightful reads so far. Oh, it's beautiful. And it's so... You're not going to want to put it down. No. If you haven't started, start it, because start you'll it. catch up so fast. So You're fast. not going to want to stop after half Mm -mm. of it you're going to want to keep going and you don't have to you You don't don't have have to to. read it read it read it just keep going you guys Guys, it's beautiful Mm. i can't Mm. wait to keep reading so who are you in this book yeah maybe maybe alice that's how i feel too (laughs) right do you feel like an alice i feel like an alice we're alice's yeah we're alice's interesting yeah what are you guys yeah what oh Oh, yeah tweet us who you are because there are so male and female. Yeah. Lots of people to identify with in this so book. So many people. And I really hope that he dives a little bit more into um, some of the male characters. I mean, we're seeing them on the surface and why he's jealous. And um, yeah. and and we kind of at the end of this go back to his old pal from the old town who is now moving out of the town and he's like selfishly I don't want you to move because when I come home you're such a big part of me being, being here, here and now you're going you're not I'm going to be here when life. I come to visit. Yeah. And that was kind of sweet. And the guy's like I can't stay. It's my turn to go. Right. And it's just kind of lovely. It is lovely. And and you see him hanging out with his work people and how, you know, this guy doesn't make as much money as this guy but he can't accept a drink from us. He buys us a drink. It's just yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. And, and really sweet. It's really sweet. It's really sweet. And I think we should all talk like the British because they have it. Yeah. In spades. They have it. This is amazing. Mm. Let's sit up straight. Let's sit up straight. And drink tea at three. Yes. And yes. go to the pub. <gasps> oh, I let's want to a pub. pub. <laughs> oh, and let's join the thespians. Let's join the thespians. But let's do it, you guys. I mean, we're thespians. Let's join That's the thespians. That's how I feel about we need it. A group. We, need we a group. are thespians. Mm. Community. Ah, oh, community. It's no, all about community. All. Interesting. Yeah. It is kind of. It is, mm. isn't it? So tweet at us. Let us know who, who you identify who you with. you associate. At 75 Reads. Yeah, that's right. And then also, don't forget, WIR75. Hashtag, hashtag contest. That. Um, that's, we'll, yeah, that's we'll, our contest. That's our contest. We'll pick a photo we like and send you one of the books that we're going to be reading. You guys, it's very exciting. Uh, who doesn't love free re- literature? Uh, Cannot wait for the next episode. (laughs) Can't wait to read the rest of the book. Yep. Second half. Next episode. We'll see you guys in two weeks. Woohoo. Woohoo. Bye.